Can the Denver Broncos defense build off of a strong performance against the Kansas City Chiefs last week? And the Denver Broncos faced Jordan Love for the very first time. We're going to break it all down on a special crossover Thursday edition, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Crossover Thursday. I'm Sarah Bettinger, co-host of Locked On Broncos, here with Peter Bukowski, host of Locked On Packers. I want to thank every single one of you for making Locked On Broncos or Locked On Packers your first listen of the day, every single day, free and available on YouTube, as well as wherever you listen to podcasts. And this Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Peter, it's not Super Bowl 32, but it's Broncos <laughs> Packers. And, uh, you know, these two teams are kind of headed towards the bye week with a lot of question marks. But I want to know from you, from the Packers side of things right now, very interesting team, very young team. What are the biggest or what's the biggest storyline going into this game in Denver? It's the offense. It, it is trying to find that rhythm that we saw a little bit more in the first three games and saw a lot less of in the second two games. And, and you know, it, it actually wasn't so different in the Lions game um, two weeks ago, or I guess th three NFL weeks ago, but two games ago for the Packers where they couldn't get much going in the first half. And then in the second half, they, they take off and all of a sudden Jordan Love looks like a totally different player. That's exactly what happened in the Saints game. It's just that the Saints weren't good enough and didn't play well enough to give the Packers a chance um, to to or to to not give the Packers a chance to come back in that one. 17 uh, points down in the fourth quarter, and Jordan Love brings them all the way back in that Saints game, a signature Jordan Love moment to start this young season. So it, th this has been part of the learning curve here. And, and you mentioned the young team. For, for your Broncos listeners, this is the youngest team of pass catchers, the youngest pass battery since the expansion Browns. That's how wow. young this team is. And that expansion Browns team did not win many games. So uh, it, this is an experiment unlike that we've seen uh, around the NFL. And so um, there are going to be inconsistencies, but the highs there are, are high. Um, in fact, I was just looking at some of these splits there. They don't make any sense. Okay, this just gives you a, a really good idea of, of the weirdness of this season. On first down this year, Jordan Love is seventh in EPA per play, estimated points added per play. On third down, the money down, he's 13th in EPA per play. On second down, he is the worst quarterback in the NFL by a mile. It just doesn't, like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't compute in any way. But this is, in a lot of ways, what happens when you've got Christian Watson, year two, Romeo Dobbs, year two, Jaden Reed is a rookie, Dontavian Wicks is a rookie. All of their, they, they have three tight ends on this 53-man roster. They're all rookies. Mm -hmm. it, it is going to be this inconsistent. And it happens to be against a team this week that has a, so far, historically bad defense, I have to think. That is at least one of the big storylines for Denver right now is what is going on with Vance Joseph and this defense. Right. No, it, it definitely is. And you're you're spot on with that. And, you know, I, every crossover episode that I've done this year, Peter, has been about how the Broncos can be kind of the get right game for a lot of teams. I'm not sure if the pack, <laughs> maybe the get right situation is on second down for Jordan Love there. Uh, yeah, Vance Joseph's defense has come under a lot of fire this season, and understandably so. I mean, Broncos fans had a bad taste in their mouths with Vance Joseph to begin with, being that, you know, we just fired him five years ago from the team as the head coach. Very, uh, I, I don't know if ironically is the right word, but kind of maybe just a crazy thing. It was right after Patrick Mahomes' very first NFL start uh, back in, you know, the 2017 season when he got that last game. That was Vance Joseph's final game, I believe, as the Broncos head coach or, or it was one of the last ones but anyways i digress historically bad defense for the denver broncos like you said 70 points allowed against miami dolphins i mean we can look at any stats or any splits that we want for the broncos defense this year ultimately bad is the category that they're in for every single one of them up until this kansas city chiefs game on thursday where everybody's thinking 
the Broncos are just going to go get boat raced by the Chiefs, which they kind of did in a way. I mean, the Chiefs kind of still dominated them anyway, but they only scored 19 points. They were four of 13 on third downs in that game, one of five in the red zone. So it was the best defensive performance we have seen from them. And maybe not so coincidentally came off the heels of the team trading Randy Gregory, um, getting rid of Frank Clark as well, who had an, an illness for that Chiefs game. I'm sure he was just sick of the Broncos. But, you know, ultimately, is it something they can build on? What is this team going to to do coming out of that Thursday night game? Like we, we weren't sure going into Thursday that last week, are they even going to show fight for for this team? You know, and they did so. Now the offense has a lot of question marks, and I know I get the inconsistency factor there. But to me, I feel like, you know, I've watched a lot of the Packers this year. It feels like to me Jordan Love is is kind of still, if, if we were to just take his scouting report coming out of Utah State back in 2020, he's kind of still that guy it, it, from what I see. A, a little bit of inconsistency, like you said, super high highs. Packers fans are not necessarily used to the the I mean extreme growing pains or maybe the extreme extremes within the quarterback developing. Where, where's your perspective on that? As far as Packers fans, are they being patient with Jordan Love? Are they ready to kind of be like, all right, this is not gonna. I, I'm seeing it's not gonna be a long term thing. Where are they at with him as far as the long term? I think it's important to distinguish between where the fans are right now and where the organization is right now with Jordan Love. The organization seems to have supreme confidence in what Jordan Love is doing. And um, part of that, I think if you watch him and you watch the way that this offense is organized, the way that they are intending to run it, I think there's a lot of signal in what a, what a coach asks a quarterback to do, especially a, a coach that you think is competent. Like sometimes, right, there are coaches who are just not very good at their job and they're asking their quarterback to do something that is just antithetical to what they're good at and antithetical to what a team is good at. I think Matt LaFleur has, has proven he is at least a competent offensive coach. I think he has shown the ability at times to be a really, really good offensive coach. They are letting Jordan Love sling that rock, Sarah. I mean, he is he is throwing it around the yard and throwing it down the field. Top five all season. In fact, only recently has he been knocked down from the top spot in average depth of target. And if you look at, say, third downs, he's second in, or yes, it's, it's in average depth of target. And part of that is because their third and their distance to go on third down average right now is seven yards, but they're not doing the thing that a lot of teams do with young quarterbacks and say, okay, on third and seven, we're throwing a screen or it's a, um, a designed, uh, not a, not a true tunnel screen, but they, they that, that quads look, everyone is running where the inside slot runs a little, um, uh, uh, shallow route. And you've got three blockers out in front where it's like, okay, just make the throw to the flat and see what they can do. Don't play quarterback. They're asking Jordan Love to play big boy quarterback. And it's because they think he can do it. And part of the problem right now is um, the, the uh, context around him is so inconsistent. The offensive line is going through its own shuffles. Rashid Walker, former seventh round pick. He's playing left tackle. He's a pretty good seventh round pick. But as a NFL left tackle, is he a pretty good player? Ah, TBD on that. Certainly not a run blocker at this point. Zach Tom dealing with injury the last couple of weeks. John Ronin Jr. dealing with injury last week. And Max Crosby, as your fans are going to know, just does this to everybody. He is going to wreck games because he's just that good a player. Um, and then all of those young pass catchers that you mentioned, plus Aaron Jones being hurt. Aaron Jones was going to be the engine of this team. If you watch them in week one, when they needed to make a play, it was Aaron Jones on fourth and two, and he scores and it breaks the game open. In the first in the first drive of the second half, Aaron Jones had on the very first drive of the game, Aaron Jones had been the engine. They go down the field, they score a touchdown. He didn't have a touch the rest of the first half. First drive of the second half, he was the guy that drove them down the field. Run game, pass game. They hit a, a, a beautiful throwback screen um, at 50 yards that sets up a touchdown and they're off and running. And, and that was the game that they blew out the Bears. He hasn't been healthy. The rest of the season, he played some against Detroit, but has otherwise been out with this hamstring injury. He seems to be back close to 100%. And I think that's going to be really, really important for Jordan Love because, as I mentioned, this offense is designed to throw everything deep. They they only recently had a player getting a any sort of level of targets, really, in volume, inside 10 yards in terms of depth. 
that's supposed to be Aaron Jones. That's supposed to be what he does. And he's not been around to do it. It's just not what AJ Dillon does. And they don't have a third running back that they feel comfortable doing that stuff with. So he is so important for what their offense does that I think just his return is going to make life so much easier for Jordan Love that you're going to see, you're going to get a better read for who Jordan Love is as a passer. If the offensive line is just okay, we saw him make some incredible throws against Detroit. Pressure in his face, Aiden Hutchinson bearing down. He throws a dime to Romeo Dobbs on fourth and nine in the red zone. Like those kinds of high level quarterback plays are there. If things are just a little more stable around him, I think you'll see a, a really talented player. I think so too. I've always liked Jordan Love and I believe in that player. And we'll see if the Denver Broncos defense can make life hard on him or if it's one of those one of those games again for the Denver Broncos defense this coming week. And we're going to talk more about the game within the game. Some of these key matchups here going into the Denver Broncos and Green Bay Packers matchup in the Mile High City and week seven here on this episode. Crossover Thursday, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Packers. Today's episode of Locked On Packers and Locked On Broncos brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. I'm wearing the joggers right now, and I just wore the shorts to work out. That's how versatile these things are. I can wear them in a professional setting if I want to. I can wear them to run to the grocery store if I want to, or just sitting around lounging if I want to. They work in all of those contexts because not only are they incredibly comfortable with their cloud knit fabric, that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. In fact, I wore the khaki joggers yesterday. If you had, didn't look closely, you wouldn't know that they're not just khakis, but they fit and feel to me like joggers, which is the most important thing. How do they feel to me personally? That's what I care about when it comes to clothes. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL or enter promo code locked on NFL at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. I know I don't want to take mine off and I don't plan on taking mine off. Maybe until I go to bed, maybe after, maybe I sleep in them. I've done that before too. We're breaking down the matchups within the matchups here. Denver Broncos versus Green Bay Packers. Very young team in the Green Bay Packers coming into a city where the Denver Broncos have a number of guys, veterans, could be on the cusp of maybe departing the team sooner rather than later. We'll see what the trade deadline brings, but a lot on the line in this game. Despite the poor record of the Denver Broncos, I, I know that it's going to be exciting, but before we break down the matchups, I want to give a huge shout out to all of you that make Locked On Broncos or Locked On Packers your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where you can watch us for free on YouTube or listen anywhere that you get podcasts. Thank you so much for making us part of your day, whether you're working out, whether you're in the car driving, or you're, whatever you're doing, however you're choosing to make us part of your day. Thanks for doing so. We appreciate it. Peter, the matchups within the matchup here, the, the Broncos, I guess, offensively, defensively, is there anything that stands out to you in particular that you're going to you're gonna be keeping your eye on in this game? I, I think there's a lot of different things that we could break down, but what stands out the most to you? Um, can the Packers convince Jerry Judy to take the plane back with them? That's the matchup that <laughs> I'm looking for. No. Um, or Justin Simmons, that's another good one. It seems like there's, you mentioned the veterans that could be on the move. Uh, in the next couple of weeks here at the trade deadline approaches. Uh, I, I think um, the, the Packers last year, remember, they reportedly made offers for Jerry Judy or at least had some interest in Jerry Judy. The asking price was uh, apparently too high. They moved on. Darren Waller was someone that they were looking at. They made the offer for Chase Claypool and, and uh, ultimately they didn't get any of those players. And I think they're pretty happy currently with the receivers that they have. But um, we, we mentioned that, that that Packers offense against this Broncos defense. I think the other part of this that is going to scare some Packers and Packers fans is, okay, what if Sean Payton just does the thing where he says, I'm going to stick to this running game, Javante Williams, please just go carry our offense. That's the thing. If you're a Packers fan, you're going, that's the only way that it seems like they can generate consistent offense is he's just a really good player. I, I kind of like what I've seen out of J Julio McLaughlin and Samaj P. Ryan has always been. He was a name that I threw out a couple weeks ago and I was like, AJ Dillon looks cooked. Like maybe the Packers could get Samaj P. Ryan for, for cheap, just like some sort of day three pick swap. Like he's the third running back on this team right now. Um, that would be the other place in addition to everything we talked about at the top. I kind of just don't want to rehash that part of it. 
But uh, mm -hmm. obviously, the thing that I'm most looking forward to is that matchup, the Packers offense versus um, the Broncos defense. But more granular, I think this run game, if the Packers can successfully stop the run game, this passing game just looks like a mess, man. And and maybe you can tell me like what you see out there because it it doesn't make any sense. I, Russell Wilson can't possibly be this bad. I, I've always liked Cortland Sutton. Jerry Judy's a nice player. Marvin Mims, for wh whatever reason, can't get targets. Don't understand that. Like, wh what's going on with this Broncos offense, dude? It's weird. It is super weird. And I I'm glad you brought that up because first handful of weeks of the season, look, the Broncos passing game was was pretty good. I mean, Russell Wilson, I think, only has yeah. one game or two games now this season without multiple TD passes. And uh, and that wasn't all just in garbage time where, I mean, a lot of people would like to say, hey, he's he's putting up production, but it's after the game's already over. No, that's not necessarily been the case, right? So it, it's just it a was weird, last weird deal. It was last week. Yes, it, the Cortland Sutton, although that was a nice play by Sutton. He really needed I mean, that. He really the touchdown that was catch. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Great, great play. But but yes, at, at any rate, it, it's been ugly for Russell Wilson for the most part. And I think that seeing him play poorly against the Chiefs and then the game prior to that against the Jets, a lot of fans are like, OK, you know, those first four games were a, a bit of a mirage. Now we're kind of back to where we were last year, where Russ is coming off the first read and taking off. I mean, he's first in the NFL, if I remember correctly, Peter, in time to throw. He's it's not like the, the pocket is just he's not just sitting in the pocket. He's beelining out of the pocket almost immediately after that first read the Broncos are bringing in extra offensive linemen to max protect which is part of the reason why you're not seeing a ton of Marvin Mims targets I mean Quinn Bailey almost feels like the and, and if you don't know who Quinn Bailey is good you shouldn't know who he is he's like the Broncos fourth offensive tackle on their roster he's coming in as an eligible extra lineman to help protect because well Mike McGlinchey a big money free agent not working out so well. And the Broncos' refusal to commit to the run has really stifled their passing game overall. So it, it, it's, it, I don't know if it was just Nathaniel Hackett or anything like that. I know Russell had a lot to do with that last year. His injuries had a lot to do with that. The, the offensive line and their injuries had a lot to do with that. But Sean Payton, he kind of expected him to come in and raise the floor of everything. And we saw that, I think, throughout the first handful of weeks. But unfortunately, these last couple of weeks, I mean, Peter, uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs, Sean Payton called a timeout after the Broncos failed to convert a third down with like 20, 30 seconds left in the first half. It was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. He, he basically gave them three points at the end of the first half. And he said after the game, well, it's a boneheaded mistake. So to, to put it lightly, I'm looking forward to that matchup of the Russell Wilson, Sean Payton versus Joe Barry in that Packers defense and how they... Uh, you know, adjust to what we've seen against the Chiefs, against Robert Sala and the Jets, who kind of had their way against that Broncos offense. There's plenty of matchups within within that. Like you said, if you want to get granular about it, I mean, we're obviously wanting to see Jaleel McLaughlin and Javon. For Broncos fans, they just want to see the good young players step up. And a lot of Broncos fans, Peter, are just hoping the team finds a way to lose while playing well, you know, to get a quarterback in next year's draft. That's what that's the impression that I'm getting. I don't feel like the organization, like you said, though, with Jordan Love has as much backing behind Russell Wilson at this point. It kind of feels like the writing is on the wall for him to be gone in 2024. So at this point, we're wondering how soon are we going to see Jarrett Stidham? Let me just tell you one player that did stand out to me. who was the one of the only players that I wrote notes about um, when I when I studied this team and I, I went back and watched the, the coaches tape of, of the last few games. One of the only defensive players I wrote any notes about was Nick Benito. And he was someone mm -hmm. who I kind of liked coming out of the draft. I know he's undersized, but the juice, the the quickness, the the athleticism, like that stuff shows up. He can be disruptive. I really like some of the stuff that I saw from him. Um, I know he's a young player um, who's probably never going to be an elite, elite kind of pass rusher, but it's just someone I I really that stood out to me and and someone that I that I saw make some plays. How has in in this defense that has just become a shell of its former self how how are you seeing these guys deployed in ways that don't make sense to you or or it, they're they're struggling with because like Patrick Sertan is a good player and it's not so different from the group last year that with the Giro Evero was a legitimately good group and so what is what is at the root you think of the failings I'm sure you guys have spent a ton of time talking about this so your listeners might be sick of hearing about it but like it's certainly something that I have not 
uh, you know, been able to have a ton of time to talk about on our show. So my listeners would love to hear from you about it. Yeah, no, the the root of the failure, I think, starts in the trenches where the Broncos just haven't been physical enough on the inside. I mean, Jonathan Harris and maybe like Quinn Bailey is a player that Packers fans have never heard of, but he's a starting defensive lineman for the Denver Broncos. And it, it kind of says it all right there. I mean, he's not playing well enough and he, he's just the Broncos did look into signing a guy like Shelby Harris didn't work out, but it starts down there on the defensive line where they just haven't been physical enough inside and teams have been able to have their way in the running game. As far as Pat Sertan, you kind of have seen him over the first six games of the season washed out a lot because, you know, either the Broncos aren't having him follow around a team's best receiver or they're playing with way too much cushion and teams are just able to get things underneath. So I think Pat Sertan, he proved, you know, like against Garrett Wilson when they played the Jets, like he can dominate if you're willing to float him around the field and match him up against the best receiver. That just hasn't happened consistently. And then on the other side, well, we're not going to throw at Pat Sertan. We're going to throw at Damari Mathis, right? Who's your other starter? Damari Mathis has not stepped up at all this season after a really good rookie year. Justin Simmons was hurt for a little bit there. So then you had Delary and Turner yell on the back end with Kareem Jackson, whose best days in coverage probably behind him at this point. Mm. So it's been it's been all encompassing linebackers are not you know they're not getting to their gaps quickly enough in the running game uh, Josie Jewell Alex Singleton those two guys they've played pretty well but it I wouldn't say it's been even close to what we saw last year where those two guys were basically living behind the line of scrimmage it hasn't happened and that I think is a result of the D line so it's sort of all encompassing no one player or or position group to blame but I'm glad you brought up Nick Benito that edge position group for the Denver Broncos one of the only exciting position groups on the team right now as far as like you said we, we talked about this on an earlier episode this week can any of those edge guys become that dude at the end of games that yep. closes out a game whether it's Benito Jonathan Cooper or we all want to see Baron Browning back on the field this week and that's the hope and that's the belief so those are some big things peter i would say for as far as that broncos defense putting up some legendary numbers not in the good way that you want to see uh, but those are areas that can be keys to victory for the Denver Broncos or for the Green Bay Packers, for that matter, if they can exploit. We're going to break down all the keys to victory on this special crossover Thursday edition. Locked on Broncos, locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Packers road favorites in this one, one point favorites. That line, at least last I checked, has not moved um, from where it opened about a week ago. Uh, and right now, new customers can get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. That's not usually how this works at a sports book. Usually you don't get money when you lose, but FanDuel is going to do that for you because you're a Locked On Packers listener. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel or Locked On Broncos, there's no better time to get in on the action, but only if the Packers win. Just kidding. Yeah, to join FanDuel to get in on all of the action. The app is easy to use. Spreads, player props, over-unders, futures, all kinds of fun stuff. I'm currently holding a lot of Jordan Love futures, Packers futures that I feel pretty good about. Have not put any money on this game. We'll maybe talk about that here in just a second. So visit FanDuel.com slash on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And today's episode also brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. There's so much uncertainty in the world right now. It's important to be prepared from the fighting in the Middle East to fires in Hawaii, hurricanes and tornadoes in Florida. Emergencies can strike at any time and it is crucial to be prepared. That's why the Jace case is there for you. A personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add on additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. Jace Medical now offers customizability for your Jace case. With dozens of add-on medications, choose the medications that bet best fit you and your family's unique needs. This is key. Go to jacemedical.com and enter Locked on at checkout to get a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at J A S E medical.com. And thanks to everyone who makes locked on Packers and locked on Broncos their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. 
And we do love starting our day with all of you. And we want to talk about some keys to victory for both of these teams. It's going to be a fun game. I, I, I always think even as, as bad as a Broncos record is, look, Broncos country, we're going to be begging for football here in a couple months. So let's enjoy it while we got it. Let's do some evaluating, even if the team's not winning. But if they are going to win, Peter, I think it's going to be, as we just kind of talked about, a perfect segue. The pass rush for the Denver Broncos is going to be mm -hmm. a key reason why they win this game if they are able to win it. Nick Bonito, he's on pace for 16 sacks. Always fun to say you're on pace for something five, six games into a season. <laughs> so I'm going to live in that realm as long as I can. But, hey, he's playing well. He's playing much better than he did as a rookie. A lot of progression from Nick Bonito. And we've seen progression from Jonathan Cooper on the other edge and Baron Browning hopefully coming back for this game. I think if the Broncos are going to win this game, a pass rush, the pass rush specifically off the edge, going to be a big reason why those guys can get to the QB in a hurry. They can affect the game. We haven't seen them really create a ton of turnovers. There was the one against the Bears where they had the strip sack from Benito. Jonathan Cooper took it back for a TD. We want to see more of that from the Denver Broncos. I'm sure Packers fans don't want to see it this weekend, but those are two young guys that you really want to see them make game-changing plays to get that confidence going forward. So I think that could be a big key to victory in this one. That segues perfectly with mine here because it is penalties and turnovers. When you look at this offense, one of the reasons why I mentioned that crazy second down stat where Jordan Love is by far the worst quarterback in the league on second down, but like pretty good on first and third down. One of the big reasons is negative plays on first down. It's penalties, a holding penalty here, a negative run. And all of a sudden it's second and 12, it's second and 15, it's second and 20. Their average yard to gain on second, second down has been second and eight. Well, if their average line to gain is, is second and eight and their average line to gain on third down is third and seven, that means second down has been a really big problem. And, and part of the reason is because they're setting themselves up in these disadvantageous situations. Also, last week, they hold Devontae Adams to four catches for 45 yards. They hold Josh Jacobs to 69 yards, nice, on 20 mm -hmm. carries. So we're talking about three and a half yards per carry. And they lose. Why do they lose? Three turnovers. It is the turnovers and the penalties that are hurting this young team. And there's other inconsistencies, missed assignments, but you see the offensive line youth and, in, and there's a lack of um, cohesion there. That shows up in the penalties, the holding penalties. They're not able to get to a, ton, a stunt pass off, turns into a hold. Those kinds of things, miscommunication. They don't get the, the protection call right, turns into a hold or illegal use of hands or you know a double you know, cut block, something like that. If they don't turn the ball over, I think that's key for Green Bay because I just I think this this Packers defense is built to take advantage of the things that the Broncos are worst at from an offensive standpoint. And so that is good news for this Packers defense. The Packers defense, with the exception of the fourth quarter against the Falcons, has not been the reason they have lost basically at all this season. Um, the, the first half against the Lions, I think you could say for sure. But guess what the Packers did in that game too? turn the ball over. And so that, that has been such a key for this team. It is a key for every team, but especially a young team like this that just can't overcome stuff like that, can't turn the ball over. And, and I, again, I think one of the reasons is the Broncos defense has been that bad. Don't give them reasons to, to play a little bit better. Uh, and that's why I don't think you're going to see a lot of targets at Pat Sertan, uh, who I do think actually, you meant, I, I meant to, to bring this up earlier in the game. I think he's going to follow Christian Watson in this game. I think that, that that will be part of the plan because everyone else is so young or unproven. If the Packers have one guy, the Packers are going to need someone like Luke Musgrave. I'm going to give you that, my offensive X factor. Luke Musgrave is the guy to me because he's been this close to a big play in every game. And they haven't, they've, they hit it in week one and they haven't really been able to hit it since then. I think they're going to try and scheme up multiple kinds of ways to do it in this game. And if they do, I think they win. I, I I love that. I, I love Luke Musgrave as well. I've been very excited to see his progression. Broncos brought him in for a visit before the draft, and Cody and I Packers talked on a number of episodes. The ceiling is is unlimited for him. I agree. I agree. I, I loved that pick, and I love the double up with Tucker Craft. Right? Shout out South Dakota State. I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, yeah. Peter. So a lot of love for him there. 
Um, I, I'm excited for for their development as well. Love what the Packers, how they're building things there. Brian Gutekunst come under a lot of fire, but I think you can see there's a, a ton of talent there. He's built something really special, and Broncos fans are really hoping for that as well. I'm not sure how much of a predictions guy you are, Peter, in terms of the score. I know you said you haven't made any bets on this game. I'm certainly not making any bets on the Broncos uh, at any point, anytime soon, because they, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from them. I, I feel like this is a game, though, first to first to 20, first to 23. That kind of sounds and feels a bit right to me, although I'm not sure the Broncos are going to get there. I, I do usually give score predictions. I felt pretty good last last week. I nailed the Raiders. I said 17, but I said 27, 17. Um, I, I really have no feel for the score in this one because I, we haven't seen a full Christian Watson game where he's been fully healthy. We haven't seen a full Aaron Jones game when he's been fully healthy. So I, I want to believe in this offense there. I really do. But until they, until they prove it, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to look more like, okay, 21, 17, that kind of like, I, I think they can absolutely go to Denver and score 30. Uh, but I, I cannot say that with any conviction right now, as we sit here today, if they go and do it, then, okay. Now in two weeks against Minnesota, I can say, yeah, they're going to go score 30 on Minnesota. I probably won't, but I could, uh, I think that 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 is on the table, but for the moment, I have to um, be a little bit more conservative. I, I think we're looking at something like I, I can certainly see a game where it's like fourteen to ten. Like that would not surprise me if we got a game like that. Um, I think this game uh, will be close if I had to predict, but I could also see. I think it's it's more likely the game will be close than not in either direction. Um, but I also think it's more likely that the Packers win by two scores than the Broncos win by two scores, which is why I feel pretty comfortable taking the Packers here. Yeah, I would I would agree with you on that. I think barring a repeat performance from that Denver defense, certainly don't want a repeat performance from the offense of what we saw against the Chiefs or against the Jets for that matter. Broncos got to find their identity offensively. Maybe this week they really lean on Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, and like you mentioned earlier, Samaje Pirine. We'll see what Sean Payton is able to do. We'll see how things play out in this one. All I know is that Locked On Broncos, Locked On Packers, we'll have you covered every single step of the way. And we want to thank you for joining this episode, this Crossover Thursday special edition. My first time joining Peter Bukowski on a Crossover Thursday. So shout out to all of you who make Locked On Broncos, Locked On Packers your first listen of the day every single day. And we'll see you tomorrow.